So let's be honest, how often do we think about, do you think about the reason for shooting what is right in front of you? So I want to take this opportunity to share our recent work as the trigger for this conversation that not a lot of photographers on the platform talks about. Hey, what's up guys and welcome back to the channel. This is Q&A session number four. And if you're new here, my name is Gabriel Lung. I am on a mission to empower all photographers and filmmakers out there to improve their thinking more than just their skills with simple art vocabularies and Q&A sessions just like this one to offer alternative views about the practice of photography. All for the goal to appreciate this medium on a deeper level and also the world around us. So how often do we think about, do you think about the whole reason for picking up that camera and shooting what is right in front of you? I'm curious to know how would you answer that question, so leave a comment down below, perhaps we can spark some conversations afterwards. So a hairstylist has different types of scissors to work with or razors to really achieve that hairstyle they wanted for a particular job. Or a musician using a different type of instruments or even changing the strings around for a particular arrangement that they wanted. A painter uses different types and numbers of paintbrushes. And dancers choosing different types of shoes for a particular move they want to achieve. And so the same thing with a photographer, you know, you choose to shoot with uh, a 35 millimeter, a, uh, a auto or a manual setting. You want to choose and be a bit more discreet with the point and shoot. Um, there's all types of cameras for different purposes and different workflows. The purpose is the key. If you know your goal, your end result, what you want to achieve, the whole reason for photographing your subject, you have your purpose. And to backward engineer, you would find out what process to best achieve that. And so you have your process. Now, once you know your process, you have to get good at it. So to develop a better and better craft to get good at that process to deliver that purpose, you need a practice. So the backward engineering starting point is really that you need to know your purpose, then you develop a better practice for a process to achieve the best result that you wanted. Does that even make sense? I mean, I hope it makes sense. And how often do we really think about it? I don't really know, but it doesn't really have to be very strategically planned out, but it's really good and very helpful if you have all these in your head when you shoot and film anything that you have planned. So at ground level, photography and the camera as an apparatus is actually a very dry, boring kind of medium because it's used for recording and documenting things on a very scientific level but I'm sure that's not what most of you are here for. So I'm gonna break down three purposes for photography or filmmaking that you might be able to relate to that is found in our community at large. So first of all is personal level. We're talking about family pictures, we're talking about your girlfriend and your boyfriend handing you a camera, wanting a better picture of them. We're talking about shooting anything for keepsake, for your own memory, what is right in front of you that you want to keep for uh, in future tense. So we're talking about, you know, pictures of the food on the table, that scene out the window that you're looking at, your kids, perhaps. So when we photograph our family photos, we want to make sure that we get a clear picture of everyone being in the same space at the same moment, right? So we want to make sure that nobody is being covered, everyone's facing the camera, we see their eyes not blinking, um, everybody's smiling, so we capture that kind of uh, happiness together. But then afterwards you're thinking, you know, I want to show more of the 
actual relationship. You know, maybe they should really be interacting with each other and not looking at the camera so much. So you ask them to really uh, talk to each other, you know, chit chatting, and then maybe also taking the camera and getting closer. You want to show a bit more of the intimacy, the perhaps intensity between members. So you take the camera, you either zoom or you get closer to them, and even making the viewer, you know, could be yourself in future tense. That viewer sees the photos and being, mm, I'm actually feeling it in the same space at the same moment, even though it's already past tense. And when you're photographing your significant other, your partner, for example, you might want to at first make sure that you get them to really uh, look good. You photograph from an angle that really flatters the subject. So you find the right angle, you get into position. Perhaps you also want to capture them in a more natural way, in the more kind of moment that them being themselves then you want to really kind of be sneaky and capture them in a more candid kind of moment. And when you want to photograph just things that you want to keep for your memory, let's say the food on the table, the, the window view that you are seeing, you want to capture in a way that perhaps really resonate with that emotion that driven you to originally take the camera out in the first place. So is it because of the light, the angle of the light that is really hitting the, the subject, the food, the, uh, the still life? You might want to really focus and try your best to really capture that light, especially window view, for example. Or is it because of the, the food that you just prepared, you really, you know, you felt really proud of yourselves because of the ingredients, then you want to make sure that it's clearly shown so that you remember that how you put it together. So there's a different purpose for shooting things. It really depends on how you want to record it for that particular purpose and the kind of emotion that you want to resonate in the future. So for the next purpose I want to talk about is on the business level. This is for people who do this for a living. Photographers and filmmakers, uh, we're talking about full-timers, part-time, even occasional freelancer, it doesn't matter. Now you can be doing wedding photos, food and products, travel, interior and architecture, fashion, um, anything that is asked. So for this level, we're really talking about photography us as a creative image maker go and help clients with the pain point by providing photographic solutions it means that we go and explain things that words cannot explain but image can so the copywriter can only go so far but the images and moving images can go even further so when you are photographing people, think about which side of them that you are trying to represent and convey through your lens or you're being asked to do. So think about, you know, are you trying to make them look more attractive? Are you trying to show their style, their personality as in their intensity or their professionalism? Uh, when you're photographing food and products, uh, the clients always wants to sell. So make them look more attractive. But then you have to ask for the questions such as how are we defining attractiveness and how are we trying to sell this product? Which kind of selling points are you trying to kind of convey? So you might want to think about, you know, are you trying to make them look more uh, clean and sleek and uh, colorful? with bold uh, and contrast uh, treatment on your photographs? Or are you trying to show how natural they are? You're trying to show the raw ingredients with uh, you know, the maximum textures that you want to capture? It's a totally different approach when you're uh, doing travel and interior photos. Rather than emphasizing how attractive they are, you might want to consider how livable the space is, how inviting it is. So you might want to uh, move away from stark contrast, but more so like something that is more inviting and livable to convey the kind of coziness being in that very space. So for the third type of purpose I want to talk about is on the community level. Now this is entering the territories of photographs that speaks about our history, culture, our uh, social political situation, and also just basic artistic expressions. I've always been mentioning this to my students when I was still teaching a while back. Um, when they work on their final year project, 
which leads to an internal uh, exhibition within the school. I've always asked them, you know, you have to think about the reason for exhibiting your work. You know, a lot of times they come up with some ideas that is very personal and tends to say things like, "All I care is that it's is a very personal level. You know, it's just kind of me doing my my work and." Uh, it's okay if people don't relate to it, blah, 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 blah. My question or my response is that if you don't care about how people feel, don't show it, don't exhibit the work. So there is no reason for showing your work if you don't really care about the people, the audience that you're trying to show. Just keep it to yourself. For a journalist who sees a scene that they want to capture a moment of truth because they felt compelled about it and they want to record that in return to show the world, the community at large, to see the same moment, the same truth, the same scene, and hopefully somebody will resonate with their own emotion when they capture it. It's kind of you know the whole goal and the whole purpose for that for the journalist to some extent so there is two part of it really there's the part where you are capturing uh, you're filming you're photographing what is in front of you there's also the second part where you're thinking of showing your work and the people you're showing how you would actually want to communicate and convey that feeling uh, that truth or whatever moment that you're trying to kind of repeat in future tense. So this really leads to our recent project for the new Blue Bottle Coffee in Hong Kong, using photography as a vehicle to reflect on a small neighborhood called Wan Chai, which is mixed with skyscrapers and century-old temples. So the coffee shop asked us to provide artworks close to their new shop opening, but there was no particular brief uh, asked from their side. So it was actually very open, if you ask me, and probably even too open. So we wanted to really pinpoint the purpose of doing this. How can we contribute to the community, the neighborhood at large, uh, use photography and art for uh, positive effects? So uh, we thought about the name of the place, Wan Chai, and deconstructing it to its very simple form of the Chinese character, the relationship between man and the sea. And that relationship actually reflects the historical background of fishermen working uh, by the coastline. And so that's the background of the place, really. And we uh, ran excursions to pick up uh, found objects, garbage, anything along the way from the coastline all the way to the coffee shop new location. So that route actually provides a contextual background for the project. And any found objects are actually a reflection of uh, as marks of civilization, so to speak. So we chose a primitive photographic process that is cameraless called Cyanotype. Any objects that we found placed on top of the fabric that is pre-soaked in light sensitive chemicals will cast white shadows onto the fabric. And the chemicals wash and dry actually turns to a deep blue. So it's basically white marks on a blue background. It really helps with the branding, I think the colors. And once hung onto the exhibition wall, the silk that we used are actually very lightweight and it's uh, moving ever so slightly. Whenever people walk by, it just kind of moves. And when you see the white marks against the deep blue background, it also kind of emulate the water waves on uh, the, the ocean surface. So with the found objects framed on the side of the wall to provide context, we hope to really trigger people to reflect on our relationship with the sea and the environment. So the work may not only be a decorative piece on the top of a cafe, but also to reconcile the impact that we make to a neighborhood, even on a small local scale. So with the smartphones nowadays, everybody is a photographer on a daily basis. You unconsciously take photos with or without a purpose. I hope you find this video helpful in a way that we try to question the notion of photography, the medium that you are actually using every day, even if you don't hold a professional camera. 
you're actually taking photos. So through my own personal experience, these are the kind of avenues that the medium can actually lead you to on a personal, on a business and on a community level, you know, but they are actually interchangeable. So you can actually achieve or work on something that actually touch on all three levels. So this is kind of personal sharing, but I'm sure this resonates with a lot of you who use this medium, uh, photography and filmmaking, to do whatever you're doing. So I uh, hope you find value in this. And if you can help me out and just like, subscribe if you haven't, and share to whoever is interested, it would mean the world to me. And if you shoot film, I've made a video on film and shooting film for pro work and, and what film means in nowadays world. So if you're interested, click on the link down below and I'll see you there. So thank you so much. Take care guys. Peace.